Okay, so I think we are live. I know we are live. Uh, but the one thing I wanted to check is uh, if you guys can see the video uh, without um, me being, um, without giving you the link to the Zoom because I'm doing this live through the Zoom. Uh, and if, uh, So I'm just waiting for confirmation from my son that you can see. Can you see? Can you see me? Yes, and you can hear me? Okay, good. So he confirmed it. Okay, so we'll get started uh, right away. I know there's a little bit of lag between what I'm doing and what you can see on uh, YouTube. Um, so if I'm being a little bit late in responding to your um, uh, comments, just uh, be mindful of the um, uh, uh, be mindful of the um, lag. And I've just uh, turned off the... Um, the sound on my video so I can, or my computer so I can see what's uh, happening um, there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to paint um, something like this, which is the pumpkins, uh, which is I think in the spirit of the, um, of the um, fall. Uh, the pumpkins here um, are a bunch of shapes here, which is basically the spear shaped pumpkin uh, and a bunch of circles that's overlapping on each other's. Uh, and the one thing that's going to happen uh, when we're painting the pumpkins is many, many layering uh, that we will do. Um, and also a little bit of uh, paint uh, drawing with some perspective um, and shapes. So if we're going to start off by, um, by looking at the uh, first pumpkin, which is a pear shaped, uh, and if you want to paint or draw a pear shaped uh, pumpkin, what you can do is um, start with the um, making a circle first. And after you make the circle, then you can think about making a triangle. Um, and then after that, you can smooth um, just of the circle and the triangle, right? Um, so that's one way of, um, of doing it. Um, there you, and, uh, and then after that, we'll make the, uh, the stem, which is kind of, you know, a little bit of a coma shape, okay? So that's one big pumpkin over here. Um, this pumpkin has a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, dots on them. So we're just going to make random shapes of the dots. Uh, and that will be the uh, painting, um, the drawing process. Um, and after uh, this one, we will uh, make a circle. Um, let's make the big circle. Well, let's make a small circle here first. So we'll make a circle. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but it will be a circle. Uh, and you can see it's overlapping over here. So I can erase that with an eraser. Uh, or if you have needed eraser, you can use that. But we'll erase it with the eraser. Um, and this is the center point of that pumpkin uh, with the stem. So I'm just going to do the stem here. And then as you draw this, the, you know, the, the, um, the shape of the pumpkin, we'll start from the center and we will make a, a slight U shape like that. And we'll start again. So the, the lines will meet towards the center and they will go, you know, as we go out, uh, it will, you know, spread apart. And as we go to the edge, we're, we'll talk about how we're going to th make this look like a pumpkin. Um, again, we'll start the, the lines close to each other in the, in the center. And al almost imagine that you have another circle over here and try to make that curve or that C shape, the belly of the C shape at this middle circle over here. So then go again. And then here, one more bumpy. Um, C shaped and another bumpy C shaped here. So try to create that bump, thinking about where does this pumpkin um, 
uh, where's the, you know, the, the highest part of that pumpkin, right? So this is just gave us the shape of a, um, you know, of a lot, you know, a little bit of perspective that this is rounded and 3D. And as we go here at the edges, I'm just going to make sure that I'm making more C shapes between the two, the lines uh, at the edges here, right? So that now gave us the shape of the, um, of the pumpkin uh, itself. Um, and now um, get, getting to the bigger size ones. So the same process, but I want the bigger size to be at the back. So I'm going to try to make, you know, very light painting of a circle, another circle, not a perfect circle, but you know, a round shape or like, like so. So then um, this round shape here will have a bigger uh, stem, maybe having the stem going this way this time. And again, everything that goes from the center out, lines close to each other, and just I'm creating a C shape, right? So if you think that you want your, you know, deflection uh, point to be up here, then that's fine, but make sure you're consistent across the board. So then it will give the consistent shape of that um, of that uh, pumpkin over there. So now we're going to do the um, you know further define the the edges of that pumpkin over here and that how it's going to look like. Um, and then we can create one more uh, rounded one right over here. Same process, just a very repetitive process. Um, and yep, so that's a circle. And then after that, we're going to create stem and then go ahead and create your variable C shape that's going to start from the center and they will be, um, further apart at the edges as well uh, and closer apart uh, at the um, at the center, okay? And then make sure you add a little bit of a curve to it here at the bottom. So just, it kind of give it a little bit of an organic um, shape that the pumpkins have. So I think that's enough for the drawing. If you don't like the pencil uh, markings, you can um, erase it a little bit, or you can have the needed um, uh, uh, eraser and, and roll it against it. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter, like it doesn't bother me, so I'm just gonna go with it. The material is, this is this Itcher Lab sketchbook. Um, these are my a small palette that I mix colors in. Um, these are the watercolor half pins, um, uh, Manio, I think, watercolors. Um, and they're, they come with a variety of watercolors and I have created my own using uh, Windsor Newton Cotman and uh, other watercolors as well. So you can see I have, you know, over the time, these are coming from the tube and they can be dried out and I can, I can, um, I can work with it. Uh, the brush that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the HR Lab brush uh, because the size of the pumpkins, maybe size six will be okay. Or maybe I'm going to go with size 10, size eight. So that's what I'm going with, size eight. And you can see that HR Lab brushes are really nice in a way that, you know, because they're round uh, and they're good brushes, when they're wet, they come to a really nice uh, pointy edge. And that's what you want to see in a good brush. Uh, they also hold a nice amount of water. Um, you also need your paper towel. I usually have a roll of um, toilet papers and I just leave it there. Um, in terms of colors, really whatever your heart desire, I have here a pre-mixed uh, yellow ochre with some yellow. So the, I'll start by giving I think this brush has a little bit of green that I need to wash. Yep. And you, you should you should always have your brushes nice and clean before storing them. It looks like this didn't happen this time. Anyway, so this is yellow. I'm going to use the yellow, and I'm just going to go and have a very light wash 
going around, not touching the stem. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Like I'm intentionally leaving some white areas. And I'm thinking that the light is coming from this area, uh, this side. So I think this side maybe a little bit needed to be a little bit on the lighter side. So that's the first wash over here. This pumpkin here, I want it on the white side. So I have some colors that are mixed, already pre-mixed. Um, so basically whatever on my palette here. But if you want that pale white color, you will take the paints gray with a little bit of indigo uh, blue and just um, have a very, very light wash of it. And I think this is going to give me a little bit of um, green, which I don't want it to be green. So I have to go to a clean palette and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to wash over here because I want a nice clear color. Um, so washing this over uh, and then going with a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of um, Indigo Blue, and a really, really light, light wash, uh, controlling the water from my uh, brush. And I'm just going um, and adding the first wash uh, for this. The moment you touch the, um, the moment the water touch the pencil, you cannot erase that. So if you're not comfortable or you don't want, um, if you're not comfortable or you don't want the, um, the lines, you have to erase it before you put water into it. Now you can see that I wasn't um, very uh, precise. I just added some colors. I intentionally left some white spaces uh, because it's always nice to have to leave that white spaces. Now I'm thinking for this one in particular, I'm going to get some concentrated indigo blue. And if I want a concentrated paint, I go with the tip of the brush and I just make a swirl like that and I bring it over and then drain the rest of the water. And then you'll have a very nice, like very nice tip. Uh, and I'm going to add, like just going to drop some paints at the bases here, maybe a little bit here. Just see what that gives me. So this is a little bit of a wet on wet techniques. Um, the effect of the wet and wet techniques really depends on the, on the quality of the paper that you have. So if you have a good quality paper, uh, you are going to get a good quality, um, a good quality uh, results with that. Now being very mindful that the, the shape is going to be round. So whenever I'm doing uh, those shadows, I'm creating, I'm making them a little bit um, round. Uh, you can always bring a dry brush just to smooth the edges here a little bit or move the paint whichever way you want it to be. I'm happy with this as a base layer. I intentionally put more paints here because this should be the dark area. Um, the shadow that this pumpkin will cast will do it at the very end. So don't worry about that. Now this is going to be an orange pumpkin. So I'm going to get some burnt sienna. Um, and mix it with a little bit of an um, orange ochre, I think, uh, but mostly burnt sienna um, as the as the base layers, and then picking that color, and then just you know, again, like I'm, I'm mindful of the shapes of the um, like the, the 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 specific shape of that pumpkin, and I'm just going to um, I'm just you know, having fun with it and not really overthinking how it's going to look like, but at least I'm, I'm allowing those spaces to be a little bit on the, um, on the white side. So I'm not really covering everything with paint. Okay, um, coming to this guy over here, it has a little bit of a um, green. So I'm mixing any, any fallow green, with a little bit of aloe um, blue, maybe. Maybe a little bit of whatever paints gray I have here. And I'm going to make this as my base for this green uh, pumpkin. And, and then after that, we're, we can come back and create more shadows as we go. Um, and while we're wet, I'm probably going to add more shadows over here. And I'm probably going to do that with a little bit of more of uh, indigo blue that I have here mixed with the green. And I'm just gonna drop it like that. And that's a little bit intense, but that's okay. 
if you feel that the color is too intense than what you wanted, you can always come back again with your brush and um, absorb it. Or you can go with the tip of the um, of your uh, Kleenex and just take away as much uh, as you want. So I think this is this is okay for me here. While this dries out, I'm going to create the background. And I think what gave that uh, painting the nice, nice color is the fellow um, blue with a little of fellow green. And I'm having a really nice mixture of paint. And I'm just going to go around like sideways with my brush like that. And just going around the pumpkins and just, you know, allowing a little, at least one millimeter of white paint, of white paper around it. And I'm just, you know, I'm just freely having the brush move around and then wetting my brush and coming back with a wet brush and letting that paint bleed. And if you have a nice paper, like, you know, the Etcher sketchbook papers, they will give you a very nice, um, very nice um, effect. I'm adding burnt sienna here. I'm burnt, sien burnt sienna with uh, the blues. It, it become, it turns into um, a very nice gray. Um, and it's a very nice marriage of colors that you used inside the painting. So it's nice to have that also in your, in your background. So just drop it you know, here and there and whatever you feel comfortable. Sometime I just decide that I want to, you know, maybe add a splatter or maybe later we'll splat it. We'll do the splatter, splatter later. Um, if you want it a little bit darker, I'm going to come back with a very concentrated uh, paints gray and have that, you know, bleed into here or in some areas more than others. Um, just to give that, you know, variation in color. Um, one of the tricks that I learned from when you're doing uh, wet uh, on wet is that when you're coming back again with a, with a second wet um, uh, layer to make sure that you're doing, uh, when you're coming back with a second wet layer, make sure that you're coming back with a very concentrated paint and that will definitely give you, um, you know, th this effect that you're looking for. Because if you come back again with, um, if you come back again with, with um, more water than paint, then what's going to happen is that you're going to create a little bit of a bloom and a list of, um, you know, a little bit of a bloom and a list of a uh, of the effect that you're looking for. Now, as I'm going up here, I'm thinking I want more burnt sienna, but maybe not because this is a burnt sienna color. So maybe have the light green play a role in here. Um, and I'm just going to allow it to bleed like that. So I'm just bringing water and just stealing from that paint that, or the, the, the paint that I put in here. Now for effects, if you like some effects, you can add some, uh, you can add some salt and that will give you a very nice effect uh, or, you know, or not. Um, I think I'm happy with this right now, like the outline. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more color in here. And I think in the center this time, I'm going to make it more of a indigo just to give it that, you know, very dark color here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so coming back now to give some shapes and shadows to the, um, to the pumpkins, it's very important now that you decide really what is the shape or what is the effect that you're looking for. So if you're looking for sharp, you know, sharp edges uh, or sharp pressure, um, or sharp edges, then you you want to make sure that you're not having a lot of a lot of uh, paint. So this is completely dry or almost dry. 
I'm making sure that I don't have a lot of water. So I'm just tapping the base here of the, of the paint, uh, of the brush. And I'm just going to create a little bit of a, you know, of an effect that I have a circle. Um, and I have a circle here because, you know, the edges are um, like the bottom is, is darker than the middle. And I'm just making sure I'm smoothing my edges. And if I'm not happy with it, I'll just dab it with the, with the Kleenex like so. Uh, and again, going back again in here, maybe a little bit like so, uh, adding a little bit more shadows here and a little bit maybe more shadows at the, um, at the center where, you know, um, you have the, like everything comes together there. Um, what I've done in here is I um, didn't really pay much attention to that details, but I, I did decide that I want to add the spots, you know, that this pumpkin has. So the way I added the spots is by just taking really just whatever wet paint I have here. So you can see the brush is really saturated with the paint. And I'm just going, um, you know, creating a little bit of a, the spotting that this pumpkin has. Uh, and I'm going very, very lightly uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the paper. So I think that's enough for the spotting. And... Um, Maybe, maybe uh, I need a little bit more shadow. So I'm just going to make sure that my brush doesn't have a lot of water. And I'm just going to um, create a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of shadows where I think, you know, the, these are going down like that. These are like, you know, because they're grooves, they should be a little bit uh, darker. So, um, so that's what I'm, what I'm doing right now. Um, now, if you want to make a really, really dark shadow, I'm coming back with Payne's Gray and the Indigo Blue. And I'm going with uh, the Pins Gray and Indigo group Blue. And what I'm doing here, I'm just, you know, doing the, um, um, some shadows here as triangles, like a small triangles here. And that will give us the, um, that will give me those small shadows at the bottom here. Okay, so that is enough, I think, for now for this pumpkin. Um, and I'm just going to leave it alone for a second so I'm not overworking it. Now I'm going to come back again to this one here, which I think is going to have a lot of burnt sienna. And just to give me that darker shadows, I'm going to add a little bit of the blue. So it's nice to use what you have already uh, in your, um, uh, what you have already on your palette. Uh, so that's basically what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna create the shadows first where, you know, where the shadows between, this is a lot of water. So I'm just gonna take a lot of, some of the water out. Because, and then we're going to go back and do that like so. And yeah. So now we're just creating the, the, I think the perspective, if you wanna call it, of how this pumpkin is looking like. Um, and now I'm just gonna go with the bright burnt, burnt sienna uh, and creating the, the rest of it. Um, so if you want to go with a, a smaller brush, you can, because I'm feeling that this brush is taking a lot of water. Um, but I'm trying to show you that you can really paint whatever you want with one brush. Uh, you can certainly have more than one brush if you have the ability to do so that. But as long as you understand the um, limitation and the strength of your equipment, you can basically paint with anything. I'm going for a slightly brighter uh, orange here just for kind of brighter effect and I'm just dropping colors really 
without any particular attention to anything except the fact that, you know, the pumpkin will be darker at the bottom and it will be lighter at the, at the top. That's the only thing that I'm, I'm paying attention to right now. All right, again, just highlighting those dark areas and I'm just gonna leave it dry. Okay, so this pumpkin here uh, was a little bit of, uh, you know, more of the brownish color. So I'm just gonna take um, burnt umber. Oh, that's really dark. So maybe just taking a little bit of orange to it, just brighten the mood a little bit and just do that. And then it has a little bit of, uh, like those lines are kind of defined um, as a raised edges. Um, so I'm just going to do that for them, like very ever so slightly, like not even touching the papers, but giving that those lines their own, their own space, like, you know, just creating those lines like that. So very, very lightly. And then maybe when I'm at it, I can, you know, just do that because, you know, why not? Right? So that created the plumminess of the, um, the pumpkin. And now I can just play, I don't even have to, to drag any colors. I just can, you know, have the colors drop from that pile or petal that I created inward, right? So I'm just gonna create, get, get some water and have that water bleed. And then you'll just kind of be slightly intentional on what colors you wanna drop in the middle. Do I wanna bring a little bit of yellow, orange, G colors, just for interest? Do I wanna just keep it the same? Do you wanna bring a little bit of a green to it? just have fun and play with it. And I think that's basically how this whole thing materialized. Now, when I'm coming to the, uh, uh, when I'm coming to uh, the, this pumpkin. So I think what this pumpkin needs is, is a little bit, it's almost like negative uh, painting. And you can see I'm not really sure what color I'm going to take. So I'm going to take whatever darker shade I have. And it has to be a little bit dry. So do you remember those circles that we created? I'm just going with the tip of the brush and just creating that, you know, shadows around it. Just a slight shadows around it like so, right? Like so. That's basically what we're creating. Um, and that's what accentuate eventually the 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 white circles uh i know like i should have not painted on the white circles but but i did um now we have to work with what we have because if i didn't paint on the white circles what would happen is let's see if i can have this like really bright color on top of it if i didn't paint on the white circles then those circles will just be will just you know present themselves as, as a raised object. And I don't have to worry about making them appear just like that, right? So they will just appear by themselves and I don't have to worry about making them appear. But now I do have to worry about making them appear. So basically I have to paint the rest of the, uh, the painting or the rest of the pumpkin a little bit more darker. So I'm just slightly going around them and creating the illusion of there's, you know, a darker structures around them. And then we'll come back again to it and make it appear a little bit more. Um, nothing really completely dry, but I'm going to get with the paints gray, maybe a little bit burnt sienna with it. As you can see, I'm not really specific on what kind of colors we should use because I think we just should have fun and not really stressed about that. Uh, so I'm going to go around here and you see how I'm holding the, my, my brush perpendicular to the page because it is very important now to have, you know, your brush, you know, you just need to have that tip and I'm just creating some lines which going to resemble the stem 
And if you feel that you have a lot of water, then you have a lot of water, then then just go and just take more concentrated paint and just bring it back again. If you feel the paint gray is too impo- like too powerful and it's just taken over, then you can dilute it a little bit with uh, indigo blue uh, or whatever colors blue that you have. And you can see here, I'm just dropping a little bit more color. Just, just curious what's going to happen if I do it. All right, we'll stop. We're not gonna damage it anymore. So maybe, maybe a little bit here. Okay, leave it alone. I think it must be left alone at this stage. Okay, now it's very important for me to get a, a drier brush and I'm just gonna pick colors from here. And now we need to define this a little bit more. So you can see that we're going back and forth, back and forth on the same, on the same, like in, in, in each pumpkin. And, and if you want to create realism, which is something I will never do because it's, you know, it's not me and it gets really stressful and frustrating. But at least if you want to create a little bit of, you know, what resemble realism or kind of impressions, then you kind of have to go back, back and forth and back and forth to create those shadows once the paper dries out. So you have to wait for it to dry out. Um, what I'm thinking is missing here right now um, and is, is the shadows. So I'm just gonna create, I take this um, burnt sienna with the blue and make that as the shadow because the shadow is usually a darker, a shade darker than what you have in here. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to create with my brush now again, you can see that I'm holding it on an angle, but I'm just trying to use it very, very lightly on the paper. Uh, so it kind of create, you know, a C shape like so, right? So it's going to create a C shape. So that's, that's this shadow and that's that shadow. And now don't remember that, don't forget that this guy over here is also creating a shadow on this guy over here, right? So we're just gonna create that shadow here. I mean, you can go overboard and kind of, you know, think that, well, these are also creating some shadows. So you can, you know, I think you can work with your painting as, you know, as, as much detail as you want, or you can, you know, pick a spot where you can say, I think that's where I'm going to stop. So you can see I'm, I'm picking here, um, a really dry paint, but I feel that I need a little bit definition over here and a little bit more darker color over here. Just like so. And um, okay, just like so. And I'm just doing, you know, those darker colors in here, a little bit more darker just ever so slightly like at the, at the you know, at, at the bottom, at the edges here, at the bottom. And here, a little bit more here, a little bit more, oh, this is too wet. So I shouldn't do that, but I think when, when, it's, when it's dry, it makes more sense. This is wet, but I'm going to risk it and I'm just going to create one extra layer, like a very nice thin line. You know, I think now this is about our third layer on those, you know, on those bumps, right? So you also, you can also create, you know, the illusions of, you know, rough surfaces. But again, remember that this is where we start and everything else has to fan out and then it comes back together here. So just kind of, your, your eyes are not going to see it initially, but your subconscious mind will think, well, this is some, there's something wrong about this pumpkin. And the reason is because you're not creating your perspective accurately. So make sure that, you know, it gets, the line gets wider and then they get narrower as they get to the bottom of that pumpkin or squash or whatever it is, that structure that you're creating. Okay, I think I'm happy with it. I, I think I'm going to get a little bit of a happy splash of burnt sienna and orange, just to give it a little bit of a, you know, and then just gonna splatter a little bit over here. 
I like this color, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of that color over here, just splatter it over this side. And I'm just kind of thinking maybe a little bit of yellow over this side. And there you have it. So that's your pumpkin. Um, and, you know, never forget, don't forget to sign your work. So, and always date it. And there you go. So I hope you like this and I'm uh, happy to do it uh, every Thursday. Um, you're more than welcome to watch it um, in, uh, on, on the YouTube channel. The videos is going to be there all the time. Uh, you're also more than welcome to um, follow me on Instagram at um, uh, AK underscore creative mind. It's in the description of the YouTube uh, video. Um, the supplies again, it's the Itcher uh, Lab sketchbook, um, the Itcher Lab, uh, you know, brushes, watercolor brushes, and any watercolor you want, and some water and some, you know, uh, fun and positive attitude. I'm really looking forward to see you trying this out. Uh, and uh, if you try it out, uh, post it on your social media and tag me at uh, AK underscore creative underscore mind. Okay, that's it, everybody. Have a great um, evening. And until I see you next uh, uh, Thursday, um, on Saturday at 10 p.m. EST, Eastern Time, I'm going to do a YouTube video, but it will be in Arabic, uh, not in English. And I know someone was wondering if I, um, someone was following my English video uh, without the voice and she thought that was very interesting. So you're more than welcome to watch the Arabic version of uh, the YouTubes.